Okay. So. Oh. Shalom. Barak Tanya Hawa. Barak Tanya Hawa Shai. Barak Tanya Hawa. Barak Tanya Hawa Shai. Call Halayma Yahawa. Bahashim Yahawa Shai. Bahashim for Kadash. All praises be to the Most High Yahawa. In the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior Yahawa Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad and double honor and respect to the elders and to the apostles of Great, of great Millstone. <clears throat> Coming back at you with another lesson is the most high one dimensional. So I wanna go into the recent topic of IUIC, talking about hatred, <clears throat> talking about King David's perspective on the other nations, particularly Esau, Edom. <clears throat> so I wanna briefly go into it so it's when we're reading the Bible, to put on a spiritual lens cannot be by choice, but is given to those of the Lord's elect to be able to read the Bible absent of emotion, absent of bias, personal opinions, and reading the Bible objectively, being opened up to receive the message within it, or the mysteries of the doctrine. I'm going to Psalms 129. <clears throat> I'm going to start there. The book of Psalms, the book of Psalms, chapter 129, verse 1. Now, when you go into the blue letter, it's the prayer for the overthrow of Zion's enemies. So how in the world is the Most High showing love to the other nations outside of Israel? I mean, look at this. You can't make, I promise you, I'm not, I'm not reading from a foreign Bible. I'm in the Blue Letter Bible. King James Version. 
Psalms 129, prayer for the overthrow of Zion's enemies. <coughs> Psalms 129, verse 1. Many a time have they afflicted me from my youth. May Israel now say, many a time have they afflicted me from my youth, yet they have not prevailed against me. Wow. Going is showing right here that the Lord has a hedge around a remnant. Unless the Lord had been our help, we would have been consumed. <coughs> Many a time have they afflicted me from my youth, yet they have not prevailed against me. The plowers plow upon my back. They made long their pharaohs. The Lord is righteous. He have cut asunder the cords of the wicked. So the wicked are going to be cut off. That's showing favor, favoritism. That's showing a distinction between the haves and the have-nots. The righteous with the gift of the Holy Spirit and the wicked in whom he have turned his face away from. See, Psalms 129 and 5. Let them all be confounded and turned back that hate Zion. We're going to go into that phrase, turned back. <clears throat> turned back. Or turned. Turned comes from the Hebrew. Strong's H, 5472. Sog. Sog. Second entry. Sog. Sog. So they're going to be moved away or moved backwards. To be turned, to be repulsed. When an enemy is repulsed, they are routed or derailed. So they become scattered, fractured. They lose their structure. See, let's go here. I don't remember where it's at. I think it's Psalm 64. <clears throat> A moment. Yes. Psalm 68. Psalm 68. Verse 1 to the chief musician, a psalm of David. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. So the other nations are going to be repulsed or turned backwards. So simultaneously, while the Most High is turning away the captivity of Jacob, Israel, the other nations are going into captivity. Whenever you repulse an enemy attack, you take what's left of them into slavery. I know you see that. So in war, when you defeat the enemy, you take the remnant or the residue and you enslave or capture them when you turn back their attack or repulse them. See? I know you see it. Let's read that again. 
No, we're going to go to Psalms 89 and 10. Psalms 89, verse 10. Thou hast broken Rahab in pieces as one that is slain. Thou hast scattered thine enemies with thy strong arm. So Yahweh Shai is our right arm, the angel of the Lord that's going to repulse the other nations. So I want to show something here. <clears throat> Let's go back to the Blue Letter Bible. So whenever you reroute or route an enemy, their attack is repulsed. They retreat. And then you pursue them and take them into slavery. They become a possession, servants, employees, slaves. Is that love? Is that unrighteous? So the Most High is multi-dimensional. He's the in all, be all. He knows all, sees all, and create or establishes all. Let's go back to Psalms. 129. So is that unrighteous or unequitable, unequal? The Most High leads into captivity, controls the arm that does so. Psalms 129, verse 5, it's right here. Let them all be confounded and turn back that hate Zion. Let them be as the grass upon the housetops, which withereth afore it groweth up. Now we got to take our time. The Roman Empire withered away. Ancient Rome, the ancient Egyptians, when we read Psalms 89, they were scattered. So, <clears throat> A kingdom of decay is what's the destiny, it what is what lies ahead, or is the destiny of America, which is the revised Roman Empire. Let's go into this word withereth. Well, read it again first. <clears throat> Psalms 129 and 6. Let them be as the grass upon the housetops which withereth of four, it groweth up. That's grass that does not even reach its full growth potential, which are these other nations. They're not going to prosper. Why you think the Bible says, no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. <coughs> Let's look up this term withereth. Withereth comes from the Hebrew, Strong's H, 3001. Yavesh. Yavesh. Wow. To dry up. To be dried. So the other nations are not built on or connected to the root and offspring of David, the fountain of life, which are eternal, everlasting life or everlasting water they're going to dry up there's a scripture in let's go to yep let's go to the book of um job i want to go to job One moment. Yeah, let's go to the book of Joel. The book of Joel, chapter one. <clears throat> the book of Joel, chapter one. Let's go to verse nine. Not really where I wanted to go. 
No, that's not where I wanted to go. One moment. I'm trying to remember where it's at. <clears throat> okay, let's just go to Job 12. Yes. Job 12. Here it is. The book of Job chapter 12, verse 15. Behold, he withholdeth the waters and they dry up. Also, he sendeth them out and they overturn the earth. With him is strength and wisdom. The deceived and the deceiver are his. See, so the Lord is going to dry up these nations. Let's go to Job 12 and 14. Behold, he breaketh down and it cannot be built up again. He shutteth up a man, and there can be no opening. So Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai is going to cause America, the European Union, and NATO to dry up. See? So that's going to start with nuclear fire. Hell on earth or the proverbial lake of fire, their destruction. So is that unequitable, unequal, when they took his people into slavery? See? And the Israelites became dried up with thirst, lost, lost knowledge, lost our heritage, lost our nationality. So he's going to return their recompense upon their head. See, let's go to Jeremiah 50. Jeremiah 50, verse 36. No, let's go to 38. A drought is upon her waters, and they shall be dried up. For it is the land of graven images, and they are mad upon their idols. So America is going to become a dry Wasteland, dried up. And right now they're being confounded. They're being made destitute. Wisdom is no more in teeming. The, the elites, which many of them connect back to Germans. See? So let's go back to Psalms 129. That they're going to wither away which is decay. They're going to die in place. Psalms 129. Book of Psalms, chapter 129, verse 6. Let them be as the grass upon the housetops, which withereth afore it groweth up. So they're going to die. Wherewith the mower filleth not his hand, nor he that bindeth sheaves his bosom. Neither do they which go by say, The blessing of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. So our ministering spirits blessing us with our daily, our da our daily bread, our daily benefits. This word, yep, beautiful. Brother Jim Escobar Adama, Shalom Barakata, Malachi 4 and 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall lead them neither root nor branch. Exactly. Because they're not connected to the fountain of living waters through the root and offspring of David, which is Shai. See that? So they're going to wither away as grass on the housetops, being beat down by the sun of righteousness direct power and energy, which is 
a son of the Most High, Yahweh which starts with being consumed by the word, according to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Let's go to Job 18. See, I was speaking through the spirit. Job 18 and 16. His roots shall be dried up beneath and above shall his branch be cut off. So is that unequal for those that are accusing the most high of being unequal? Is that unbalanced? Is that unrighteous? Did not they dry up Jerusalem, carry off the captive daughter of Zion in the captivity? Was not Jerusalem made desolate the Lord's chosen heritage, his inheritance. So I guess the Most High is off now for returning their recompense, which means payback upon these other nations' head. Yep, Brother Gabar Ayash, Jeremiah 5 and 14. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, because ye speak this word. Behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire, and this people would, and it shall devour them. So when we read, therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured, and all thine adversaries, every one of them shall go in the captivity. So they must hear this word. So they're being marked. How many have ever seen a weapon with a laser dot? They're being painted with a laser dot on their forehead. And their reward, their punishment, is going to return upon their own head, which is this fire, this doctrine. Even a, a fighter pilot, he gets what they call painted. That means he's been locked on by an anti-air ballistic missile, an anti-aircraft missile or rocket. He's being painted or marked for destruction. So you other nations, starting with you reprobate, heathen, two-third, wicked-ass niggas, have been marked by the word, pursuant to John 15 and 22. This is the laser dot that's marking you in the forehead. Jeremiah 5 and 14. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord, God of hosts, because ye speak this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire, and this people would, and it shall devour them. So Jeremiah, I guess Jeremiah is off too, when he said, therefore all they that devour thee shall be devoured. So Jeremiah is unrighteous too, I guess. And all thine adversaries, every one of them shall go into captivity. Wait a minute. I guess King David is unrighteous too. Let's go to First Chronicles. We are the world. We are the children. Okay, yeah, whatever. We get we're at the bottom, looking up at the bottom, with dry lips and ashy elbows. No oil, dried up with thirst, okay? So that one size fits all, God loves everybody, we're all equal, then go ahead and let me borrow your billion dollar yacht or your billion dollar submarine to, to take out my woman on a date, all right? So the bullshit, we are the world, is lies. Stop lying, sleazy E, but you simps, you, you, you fall for it every time. Let me visit your gold vault and let's sit down together and drink a $20,000 glass of scotch or bourbon whiskey. If we can't do that, we're at the bottom, okay? Stop playing, Jake. Let's go here. First Chronicles 18, verse 1. All they that devour thee shall be devoured, 
that's slavery. First Chronicles 18 and 1. Now after this, it came to pass that David smote the Philistines and subdued them and took Gath and her towns out of the hand of the Philistines. So the enemies of Israel, starting with these international bankers, are going to be subdued. And when we read Joshua 10, somewhere around 22 and 23, he said, go ahead and put your foot on the necks of these kings. So I guess Joshua is off too. First Chronicles 18 and 2. And he smote Moab, and the Moabites became David's servants and brought gifts. So the modern-day Chinese, or Moab, became servants. And I was listening to a lesson Elder Apostle Gabar did. When you read the black laws, or the black, law, yeah, the black laws, that word employer goes back to the word master, employee, servant, or slave. So most of us are employees which translate into servant, which translate into slaves. So are we being shown love? We pay monthly taxes, and then at the end of the year, they say, oh, you owe us more taxes. We pay off our car, our house, we got to pay taxes for a lifetime and pass that slave debt to our kids and grandkids. But I guess we're free. The day of the simp, Good old step and fetch it, yes, a boss and nigger is on his last leg. Or well, the Shepard the 12, Joshua 10, verse 24. And it came to pass when they brought out those kings unto Joshua that Joshua called for all the men of Israel and said unto the captains of the men of war which went with him. Come near, put your feet upon the necks of these kings. And they came near and put their feet upon the necks of them. So Joshua is, un is he's off too. I guess Joshua is not a man of the Lord. According to the doctrine from Simps are us and the Jezebel woman kings. You Jezebel woman kings are finished. You're done. You're done under the sun, son. It's over. Okay? I'm just telling you. And simps are us pushing their God loves everybody doctrine. They're following after the, the beast or the model of Rome. Just like King Antiochus. We're one people or we're, we're all equal. We're only easy or sleazy E is only a team player when he is a team leader over all peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. Let me say that again. Sleazy E is only a good team player when he is the team leader over all peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. And then they'll try to convince you we're all equal. You just continue to work for me while I reap all the benefits and own all the land, all the gold and silver, and own all the oil. You just keep being a good boy. First Chronicles 18 and 2. And he smote Moab, and the Moabites became David's servants and brought gifts. So King David is off now. Let me get this straight. The Most High said King David is a man after my own heart. So he made the so-called Chinese servants employees. Let's look up this word servants. Did not the Most High say he will rebuild the tabernacle of David as in the days of old? Hey, Jackie Robinson, please post the whole scripture, okay? So we can help edify the body and feed the lambs. It causes a, a disruption, a distraction. Let's look up that word servants. Servants comes from the Hebrew. Strong's H 5650. 
Evid. Evid. Oh, slave. So King David is off. Let me get this straight. I'm not the brightest man in the world, but I can read. The Wadi Yahawabah Shimmy Habashah. A slave. Subjects. Wow. So the so called Chinese are going to become our employees. There's more. And I'm getting the two headed monster right now that's being raised up in the East, the BRICS nations. Let's go to 1 Chronicles 18. The book of 1 Chronicles, chapter 18, verse 13. And he put garrisons in Edom, and all the Edomites became David's servants. Thus the Lord preserved David whithersoever he went. So now we got to rewrite the doctrine and say the Most High went off and King David. The Most High for saying King David is a man after his own heart, and King David for enslaving our enemies. And not the Bible say, I will rebuild the tabernacle of David as in the days of old. So that means King David is going to have to be raised up. He is the man that standeth for the children of thy people, Israel. Brother Jim Escobar Adama, Isaiah 65 and 12. Therefore will I number you to the sword, and ye shall all bow down to the slaughter. Because when I called, ye did not answer. When I spake, ye did not hear, but did evil before mine eyes, and did choose that wherein I delighted not. So that's starting with the Israelites, the rebels, preparing a table for, for Rome, for that truth. Esau, Edom. So they are in bed with the enemies of Israel and most of our women because they are very hypergamous. They're just looking at the dollar signs. All I see are signs. All I see are dollar signs. Whoa, whoa. The Lord is going to destroy you wicked ass Eves. All right. When you look at that serpent or that dollar sign, it's a serpent wrapped around a pole. So you're lifting up sleazy E, wrapped around the pole, the serpent, instead of Yahweh Shai, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. You're worshiping mammon, which is an idol, okay? And then making a song about it. All I see are signs, all I see are dollar signs, okay? Well, the Lord's going to put an end to that BS. Brother Gabar Ayash, Isaiah 60 and 10. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their king shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy upon thee. So they're going to be slaves, employed, employees. Well, you weak-minded men out there trying to build a peanut store or a damn cotton candy side vendor somewhere. Instead of looking on the gifts and the rewards that are eternal, the kingdom, ruling over our enemies in righteousness. Brother Jim Escobar Ayash, Isaiah 60 and 10. Let's go to 11. Therefore thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. So they're going to come unto us, bowing unto us. Perpetual or continued employment. Get the work, Sleazy E. No Starbucks for you, Sleazy E. All right? You will get water because we need you to, to get the work, do some labor. You've got to be productive, bearing in bodies. Continue employment. I believe that's in Ezekiel 38. Their first task these high-level, multi-level trillionaires is to burn, dead, or bury, and, and get rid of dead bodies by burying them. 
their first test and then are going to become Bob the Builders. Like that old cartoon my daughter used to watch. An Edomite building stuff. So they know their destiny. Get to work. Well, I guess King Solomon is off too. When he enslaved the nations. Brother Shabbat the 12, Sirach 25 and 7. There be nine things which I have judged in my heart to be happy. And the tenth will I utter with my tongue a man that have joy of his children and he that liveth to see the fall of his enemies. So we're living to see the fall of the caveman and wicked two-thirds sins that love their slave master. You sick, we sick the day, boss. You sick, we sick, boss. So the day of the low vibrational Low-level, simple-minded simple fool is going to come to an abrupt end. You hear his boss sneeze at work. We sick, boss. You see, those Negroes got to go. They have got to go. So King Solomon is off. King David is off, until this, according to the simp doctrine. Simps are us, according to the Jezebels that are very hypergamous and just Follow the money. Whoa, 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 all I see are signs. All I see are dollar signs. You wicked ass Jesse's got to go too. The Lord is going to put the silent, the rebellious Eve, and these wicked ass Jakes. The games are getting ready to end. This is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. So I guess King David is off. First Chronicles 18, verse 11. Them also, let's go back to verse 10. When I lost my place thinking of these sins. We sick, boss. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Where was it when King David put these Edomites into slavery? First Chronicles 18. Let's go back up to Yes. Let's go to First Chronicles 18 and 11. Them also King David dedicated unto the Lord with the silver and the gold that he brought from all these nations, from Edom and from Moab and from the children of Ammon and from the Philistines and from Amalek. So right now Amalek is at the top. The small hats, the international bankers. You see, so they're going to go into slavery. That's why they're scared. So we're reading about the king that's standing for the children of thy people, Israel. So that's why when we read Obadiah 1 and 21, and Savior shall come up upon the Mount of Edom and judge the Mount of Edom. Whenever an enemy is defeated, their land is taken into possession. Their women is taken into a possession. Also for you simps, newsflash, their women are going to be concubines, as in the days of old, which is a female slave or servant. I'm not going to be on the status of a wife. They're going to be ser servants, slaves, concubines, or female slave. Right now, there's a simp getting upset. You see, unbelievable. Let's go here to 1 Chronicles 18. Well, we read enough of that. So the Israelites are going to be delivered. It says Moab became David's servants. Edom became David's servants. Employees, slaves. See? So let's go here to Deuteronomy 30. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 1. 
verse 5. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possess, and thou shalt possess it, and he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. Mm. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. Here's the, one of the scriptures that I love too. So we're going to be changed so we cannot go off again. We're going to be spiritually empowered or turned up. So the Lord is going to power up Israel. Shalom, beloved brother, GMS Virgin Island Straight Gates, Barakatha. Let's go here to Brother Gabar Ayash, Jeremiah 49 and 11. <laughs> Let's go to verse 10. Jeremiah 49 and 11. Lead thy fatherless children, I will preserve them alive, and let thy widows trust in me. We just read about concubines right there. Is the Most High going to stoop down from his throne and be holding the hand of a concubine or a slave girl? No. So their widows trusting in him means they're going to be under the authority, jurisdiction, or domination of the mighty men of the house of David. That's how they're going to be trusting in Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Because they're going to be subjugated or subjects under the tabernacle of David. Let's read that again. Jeremiah 49 and 11. Leave thy fatherless children. I will preserve them alive and let thy widows trust in me. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken. And art thou he that shall altogether go unpunished? Thou shalt not go unpunished, but thou shalt surely drink of it. So we drank from the cup of the dregs of slavery. So sleazy E, followed by the other nations, must drink from the cup of the dregs of slavery. See, let's go to Deuteronomy 30. Verse 7. So when we read Deuteronomy 30 and 7, it connects to Deuteronomy 28. When all the curses fell on Israel, Deuteronomy 28, 15 on down, it's going to be turned unto all the heathen and Gentile nations. Deuteronomy 30, verse 7. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies, and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. So I guess this is unrighteous. We've been slaves under the Assyrian Empire, the Babylonian Empire, the Medes, the Persians, the Medo-Persian Empire, the Greeks, the, the Romans, the Greco-Roman Empire. So the Lord balancing the scales of justice I guess the Most High is off now. So he's off now, too. So all these nations are going to go into slavery, pursuant to Jeremiah 30, verse 10, 11, and Jeremiah 30 and 16. See? So the curse of Deuteronomy 28, 15 on down does not cease until... Yahweh Shai breaks that curse upon his return. And then the other nations are going to be in slavery. How do we know that? Somebody post that in Revelation 22. There shall be no more curse. So immortality or being changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, is going to go into effect. Instantly. Somebody post that, please. There shall be no more curse. I think it's Revelation 22, somewhere in those first few scriptures. <laughs> That's right. 
See? So this is not, this doctrine is too high for a simp. See? Isaiah 55 and 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. See? So the simps are stuck in an earthworm spirit or an earthworm mindset. They're stuck in the flesh, in the earthly. So they're not being elevated or promoted spiritually. So they're going to die in the dirt or the dust of the earth at the destruction of these nuclear missiles. They're going to be turned or beat into powder pursuant to 2nd Ezra 16 and 13. Dust mites, earthworms, starting with the two-third bug outs, or simps are us. They're going to die in place. Brother Gabar Ayash, Revelation 22 and 3, and there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, that's Yahweh Shai being set up, followed by King David, being servants of the all-righteous power, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. That's being restored back into the Holy Land under the new covenant. We're not under the new covenant, and we still got arthritis. we got a report into the caveman. Present for duty, boss. I got here earlier today, boss and already made your cup of coffee. That's not the kingdom, all right? That's a queendom under the serpent and Eve, all right? That's not the kingdom, Jake. Your coffee is nice and hot, boss, and I put the marshmallows on top, floating around in the cup, just like you like it, boss. Please sign my leave so I can take off next week. That's servitude. That's not the kingdom. And we're not going to have to go to the Esau Edom's hospital or emergency rescue services. That's bug out if you think we're under the, the new covenant in the kingdom now. Here's more proof. Deuteronomy 30. Let's go to verse <coughs> 19. Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. I, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, therefore choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. So when we fast forward today, the elect are going to be preserved, a remnant that are clinging on to the doctrine of Shai, which is the root of, an offspring of eternal life, connected to the life source of flowing waters or rivers of life. Deuteronomy 30, here's more proof. Deuteronomy 30 and 20. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Are we in the Holy Land with eternal life where we cannot die? Are we in the land which is a part of the contract promised unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? No, we are not. We're still dispersed or scattered under our enemies. So what we're reading about, Daniel chapter 12, we're reading about the deliverance of Israel and the restoration of the tabernacle of David. It's very important to understand that. You see, that's why I started off reading of the deliverance of Israel, King David, 
delivering Israel and enslaving the other nations. So Jacob's trouble ends in victory. The enslavement, imprisonment of the enemies of Israel and the death of those that fight against us and the residue of the heathen being taken into a possession or captivity. See, let's, let's get one more. So deliverance of Jacob equates to slavery of the other nations. Second Samuel 8, verse 14. No, I want to go to the top and show something. See, King David triumph in the blue letter. Second Samuel 8 and 1. And after this, it came to pass that David smote the Philistines and subdued them. And David took Methmagama out of the land, a hand of the Philistines. And he smote Moab and measured them with a line, casting them down to the ground. Even with two lines measured he to put to death and with one full line to keep alive. And so the Moabites became David's servants and brought gifts. So their mighty men are going to be put to death. Their military arm is going to be broken. So the scepter or the staff of a kingdom is backed up by its military arm, its might, which are its teeth. So the teeth of the lion of the enemies of Israel is going to be broken out. What good is a lion with no claws and no teeth? He's bird food is what he is. So they're going to be militarily broken, defeated. So that line being measured out, they're being put to death. They're mighty men, they're militaries. Second Ezra 8. And we're going to take our possessions, their land, their women, and their children. And just like Moses did, the young women, when they reach full age, which means they pass their flower or their menstrual cycle, they become concubines. That's when they become concubines. And the women that laid with men being put to death, and their mightiest warriors being put to death. You see? So what's left are their, their men that are left to be preserved just to serve. The residue of the heathen. But their lands are being occupied by might. So the angels of the Lord are also known as the men of Israel, <coughs> which are the first spirits created or the first church. Let's get one more and prove that. Um, I think it's Second Samuel 24. Second Samuel 24. Verse 17, and David spake unto the Lord. No, that's not what I wanted. 2 Samuel 29. No, let's go to 1 Samuel 29 and 9. 1 Samuel 29 and 9. Let's go to 8. And David said unto Achish, but what have I done? And what hast thou found in thy servant? So long as I have been with thee unto this day, that I may not go fight against the Philistines of my lord the king. So this is a, a military arm of Yahawashai, a commanding general. 1 Samuel 29 and 10. 
Wherefore now rise up early in the morning with thy master servants that are come with thee as soon as ye be up early in the morning and have light depart. And David and his men rose up early to depart in the morning to return unto the land of the Philistines. And the Philistines went up unto Gezerah. So the Philistines are being slayed in the last days. The descendants of Ham, the Moabites are being slayed in the last days. The descendants of, of the so-called Chinese, the Ammonites in the last days, the so-called Japanese. <coughs> this is the rest restoration of the tabernacle of David, building the Lord's temple through force. So the wicked kingdom of the heathen is being taken down by military force. This is why Yahweh Shai said in John chapter 18, if it was my kingdom, then my servants shall fight. So this is the military arm of the mighty men of the house of David, or the Shapah of the twelve, Job 20 and 6. Though his excellency mount up to the heaven and his head reach unto the clouds, yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. They which have seen him shall say, where is he? He shall fly away as a dream and shall not be found. Yea, he shall be chased away as a vision of the night. The eye also which saw him shall see him no more. Neither shall his place any more behold him. So this is Edom being cast down, defeated by military might of men of valor, valiant men that have been spiritually raised up. So this is not a man-made militia or rebellion. This is the Most High executing a standard. The men being invigorated with the fire of the Spirit, which starts with the Word. Job 20 and 15, reinvigorated or re-energized, recharged with that fire from on high. Job 20 and 15. He has swallowed down riches and he shall vomit them up again. God shall cast them out of his belly. So the wicked are being cast down and the Lord is raising up the first spirits created or the sons of God, Yasharala. He is a prince of the power. So King David will be raised up first, followed by the rest of the mighty men of the house of David. Let's read this one. Trying to find that one. One moment. Okay, yeah, 1 Samuel 29 and 9. And I kiss, answer, and say it to David, I know that thou art good in my sight. As an angel of God, notwithstanding the princes of the Philistines, have said, he shall not go up with us to the battle. So these angels of the Most High starts with King David, but the rest of that military or battle acts are the men of the house of David. See, which standeth for the children of thy people. So the Lord is going to raise up a battle axe of judgment. And these connect back to the saviors in Obadiah verse 21. That shall come up upon Mount Edom and judge the, the Mount of Esau, or the last leg of the revised Roman Empire. So the enemies are being slain that we read where David measured out one line to be put to death. Let's read one more. 
Let's read one more. <clears throat> See, 1 Samuel 18 and 8. 1 Samuel 18 and 7. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul have slain thousands and David ten thousands. And Saul was very wroth, and the saying displeased him. And he said, They have ascribed unto David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed but thousands. And what can he have more but the kingdom? See that? But the kingdom. So the enemies of Israel are going to be slain. So this is the battle axe that is raised up. Standing for the, the children of thy people. So every king has a right hand. The most high's right hand is Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai's right hand is King David. And while King David was on the earth, his right hand was Joab. So every king has a right hand or right arm, so that we can understand. Brother Gabar Ayash, Jeremiah 51 and 20. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war, for with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms. So just like we read in the old days, I will rebuild or build again the tabernacle of David as it was before, or as at the beginning. So that means King David is going to be raised back up. The mighty men of King David is going to be raised back up. So that restoration of the house of David comes with spiritual power, being made into walking vessels of war. Mighty men, as in the old days, subduing the nation being empowered by the angel of the Lord before us, which is Jehovah Jeremiah 51 and 20. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms. And with thee will I break in pieces the horse and his rider, and with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider. Beautiful. With thee also will I break in pieces man and woman, and with thee will I break in pieces old and young, and with thee will I break in pieces the young man and the maid. See? Man, woman, and child. I will also break in pieces with thee, the shepherd and his flock, and with thee. Will I break in pieces the husbandman and his yoke of oxen? And with thee will I break in pieces captains and rulers, their militaries. See that? So the Lord is raising up angels, a.k.a. mighty men. That's why I read um, that King David was called or compared to an angel of the Lord or Yashar Allah, Yashar Allah. He is a prince of the power, Israel. So Israel is being restored. That comes with spiritual power. That's part of the promises or restoration of Israel. So these nations being defeated, or Israel being delivered equates to the nations being captive or going into slavery. <clears throat> Let's read one more. Daniel 12 and 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. 
and at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. So the elect are being delivered in the last days, saved out of Jacob's trouble. So deliverance or the birth of Jacob equates to bondage and servitude of the nations. For the beyond Yasharala, Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 17, he shall take to him his jealousy for complete armor and make the creature his weapon for the revenge of his enemies. See? So the Lord is going to make thy horn brass and their and thy somebody post that because I just slaughtered that scripture. I will make thy horn iron and thy hooves brass. So the creatures are his sons, his creation, which starts with the sons of light, the tabernacle of David, or the elect, lively stones. Exactly the water, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Let's read this again. Daniel 12 and 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. See that? So we're going to see some major, marvelous, and wonderful divine acts. This is, let's go back to that. Brother Bayan Yasharala, Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 17. He shall take to him his jealousy for complete armor and make the creature his weapon for the revenge of his enemies. See, I have said that thou art or ye are gods. Yep, brother um, Mashiach Arazaka, Luke 10 and 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So when we put everything together, if it was my kingdom, then my servants shall fight. So the Lord, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, is going to activate the switch in his mighty men or angels of the Lord. When you go into that word angel, it's nothing to bug to bug out over. As soon as we hear angel, we bug out. Oh my God, you know, oh my God, oh God. It's, it's, it's messenger, pastor, prophet, or preacher. When we break down the word angel, you know, a lot of us just bug out. Oh my God, I did that, you know. It's like we just need to relax and calm down. Angels are teaching in the last days. Brother Bayan Yasharala, Micah 4 and 13. Arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion, for I will make thine horn iron, and I will make thy hooves brass, and thou shalt beat in pieces many people. So the scriptures do not lie or contradict themselves, but come together like a puzzle with over a hundred thousand pieces. But it begins to come together. Yep. Or the Mashiach Arazakah. Ezekiel 25 and 14. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel. And they shall do in Edom according to my anger and according to my fury. And they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord. So all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai for raising up the creature to become his battle axe, walking weapons of war. See, that's why he says, Fear not, thou worm Jacob, and ye men of Israel, for I will help thee. See, so he's going to strengthen those that are beat down, brokenhearted, downtrodden. Oh, oh, man, it's one of my favorites. Yes, sir. 
Yes, sir. Jeremiah 16 and 16. Behold, I will send from many fishers. So these fishers are angels or preachers or prophets, messengers, if you will. A prophet or angel breaks down into messenger or prophet, which means to say before, which are fishermen casting out the word, this message. Jeremiah 16 and 16. Behold, I will send from many fishers, saith the Lord, and they shall fish them. And afterwards will I send from many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks. Even the international bankers are going to try to hide themselves in their natural caveman's habitat under the earth, underneath these mountains. Remember, what's the name of that mountain named after the Native American? I think a Cheyenne mountain. Caveman has got that set up too. Underground with military and Starbucks, air conditioning. He's got all types of swimming pools, jacuzzis, spas, and nice cuisine restaurants. Mighty men are going to come meet you, cavemen, in those underground getaway facilities. So the preachers are going to be pulled back, or the fishermen, that nice, gentle prophet that you've been mocking and scoffing and throwing things at, cursing out, is going to be changed and become a walking weapon of war. Mighty men. I had a vision, and I shared this vision with Elder um, Monagon out of D.C. And the vision almost bugged me out. You would think it would be common sense, but to me it was kind of bizarre. He was real close up on me which was really uncomfortably close. But when I looked closely, he was like protecting me, doing like defensive stuff. And I told him about the vision yesterday. And he said, oh yeah, that's easy, you know, mighty men. And I just looked at him like, <laughs> you know, unbelievable. But a lot of times I think I'm tripping when I have these dreams. Unbelievable. But in that dream, he was defending me. You see, well, they're not white, uh, Giovanni Rivers. They gave them that name, which mentally sodomizes us. Because when we hear white, it casts a spell. Pure, wholesome, righteous, divine. You know, purity. Where they can do no wrong in our eyes. They're white and we're black. You see, we're black, which is sinister, wicked, bad, evil. <laughs> or as in the beloved Elder Hawad's mouth, evil. When in reality, evil means bad times. See? So the Lord sees you, caveman. You see? Let's go ahead and read it. Brother Gabar Ayash, serving Yahweh Shai. Amos 9 and 11. The same chapter that the house of David is going to be restored as at the beginning, which means that King David will be raised up as well. As at the beginning, I will rebuild the tabernacle of David. The same chapter. So the mighty men of the house of David is going to come get you, caveman. I'm just telling you. Don't shoot the messenger. No pun intended. For the Gabar Ayash, Amos 9 and 2. Though they dig into hell, then shall my hand take them. Though they climb up to heaven, then will I bring them down. So the right arm of the Most High is Shai, which extends to his battle axe or right hand, Jacob. Amos 9 and 3. So the mighty men are going to become hunters and take out these cave beasts, followed by the other nations, under him, peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. Amos 9 and 3. And though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, I will search them 
and take them out hence. I mean, read it again. I got excited. And though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, I will search and take them out thence. And though they be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea, thence will I command the serpent and he shall bite them. Leviathan is going to be raised up. Okay, they make movies about this underwater creature. Okay, so he's going to be raised up. So it's going to be a day like there has never been that we read in Daniel 12 and 1, which brother and prophet Jeremiah echoed that prophecy. Yeah, Godzilla, I couldn't think of that name. They got that from the scriptures. You know, making all these weird sounds. Even Godzilla did karate, too, in some of the movies I watched when I was a kid. Yeah, he coming, too. So, Sleazy E, you don't stand a chance. Godzilla, the mighty men of the house of David, King David, it's over, Sleazy. It's over. The angel of the Lord, Yahweh Shai, you don't stand a fighting chance. I'm just telling you. So he's going to search you out and take you out. So it's over for the prehistoric man that's terrorizing the earth. Fake fruit, fake juice, fake water, chemical trails, contaminated air. All that's going to be over. No more curse. So our bodies is going to heal. The earth is going to heal. A rat can be a rat, as in the words of Elder Yahshua. A woman can be a woman and not put on body armor and call herself the woman king. All that's going to be done away with, total madness. A man is going to actually have a upright, straightened out back, a backbone, and not scared or a weak worm or effeminate and scared. So everything is going to be, the course of the earth is going to be brought back into balance. The foundations and the course of the earth all nations are going to be put back in their lot pursuant to Deuteronomy 32 and 8. Everything is going to be set back in order. And the mighty men of the house of David are going to be restored back to their old estate. Supernatural abilities, telepathic, mind reading, levitation or floating. And there's other terms like manipulating electricity. Manipulating the weather and the elements. Manipulating the mind of our enemies. Reading their mind. Communicating with the wildlife and the creatures. The animals of the field. Communicating with them. So hopefully this lesson has been edifying. So the Most High's wisdom and the depths of his thoughts are multifaceted, multi-layered, manifold wisdom, multi-dimensional. The depths of the thoughts of the Most High cannot be searched out or measured. And it would bug us out to try to understand all of the depths and wisdom of the Most High. Brother Gabar Ayash. Joshua 23 and 10. One man of you shall chase a thousand for the Lord your God. He it is that fighteth for you as he hath promised you. So these are part of the promises of the contract that he made with our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And this message cuts the bug out Hebrew Defense University that we ought to take up guns. It just said the Most High will fight for us. Hebrew Defense University of Bug Outs. We just read it. HDU. So the restoration of the Tabernacle of David comes with X-Men power. Superman power. Mighty men. Tabernacle of David is being raised up and restored as it was in the beginning. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Hashem, or Kwakadash.
double honor and respect to the beloved apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and to the beloved brothers of the hopeful elect of the house of Israel, of the house of David. To you we say Shalom and Barakathun. The tabernacle of David is being raised up and restored as it was in the beginning. We got next, Lord willing, or Adaran Ratazah. Shalom. Peace be unto you. Shalom. 